go put the nuclear. You can't see it or hear it, but Wi-Fi blankets our homes, our cities and our schools. Children today are growing up in a sea of radio frequency microwave radiation that did not exist five years ago. Our safety agencies dispute that wireless devices like mobile phones cause harm. I don't think it's good enough to say at the moment that mobile phone use does cause, uh, does cause cancer. Cell phones emit pulsed radiation. And just... But some of the world's leading scientists and industry insiders are breaking ranks to warn us of the risks. There is an association between heavy mobile phone use and brain tumours. I've been in the technology industry all my career and I've seen the tremendous benefits that technology can provide. My concern is nobody can say that it's safe. Do mobile phones cause brain cancer? And is Wi-Fi making us sick? In this episode, I investigate the latest research and advice about the safety of our modern wireless devices. The digital revolution has transformed our lives. Phones, tablets, watches and laptops, all connected to wireless networks. We use these devices to make calls, send texts, write emails, play music, take photos, and even watch TV. In fact, chances are you could be watching this on your wireless device right now. We've gone from the equivalent of the horse and buggy to the jet in about 10 years. The transformation in technology has been without precedence. The devices that are held directly next to the body, the mobile phone, the cordless phone are the ones we are most concerned about. When US cancer epidemiologist Dr. Deborah Davis was first told about the risks of mobile phones, her reaction was predictable disbelief. I said, what are you talking about? There's no problem. If there were a problem, I would know about it. Because of course I was working at the National Academy of Sciences. I was working at the Cancer Institute, a professor of epidemiology at the University of Pittsburgh. And I frankly thought, there's nothing to this. Then, however, I began to look. And the more I looked, the more concerned I became. Dr. Davis has had a distinguished career as a presidential appointee for the Clinton administration and is recognized internationally for her work on environmental health and disease prevention. She was recently in Australia holding a series of public seminars. People are assuming everything's fine until we have evidence that we are in the middle of a disaster. Today, there's over 6 billion phone subscriptions worldwide. Many of them smartphones, with apps that frequently receive and transmit electromagnetic signals. In a similar way, the human body has electromagnetic fields. Electrical currents flow through nerve fibres and muscle tissue, and external interference can disrupt those signals. Our heart and our brain are electric. We need to understand that exposing our electric body to mobile phone radiation for thousands of minutes a month, for hundreds of hours, over a lifetime, it's going to have a biological effect on you. In fact, the BlackBerry comes with a warning. It says, if you have a pacemaker implanted in your chest, keep the mobile device at least 20 centimeters away. Well, your heart is a pacemaker, whether you have a machine in it or not. So obviously you want to protect your heart and the rest of your body. Finnish radiation biologist Dr. Darius Lazinski is an internationally recognised expert in radiation safety and has been an advisor to the WHO on such matters. He says most people with a smartphone nowadays may be unwittingly breaching the safety limits of their device. Sometimes a person puts cell phone in a pocket which are connected to internet, then safety limits are being breached and this cell phone doesn't comply with safety regulation once it is put in pocket. Phones are manufactured to ensure the radiation they emit can't overheat the body and cause thermal damage. It's called the specific absorption rate. But during testing, 
the phone is positioned at a distance away from the model body. Therefore, when you place your smartphone in your pocket directly against your body, you may be exceeding the safety standard. In order to comply with safety standards, the cell phone has to be at some distance from body. So it's fair to say that sometimes people would be breaching the safety standard of their mobile yes. phones every day. Yes. That's quite shocking. I don't think people are aware of this information. Uh, because nobody is talking about it, uh, including uh, radiation safety authorities. They uh, simply don't mention it. Electromagnetic radiation is everywhere. We have always been exposed to natural sources like the sun, but there are some sources of radiation that are man-made. Today, with the proliferation of mobile and wireless technology and devices that emit artificial radio frequency radiation, some claim we're exposed to levels up to a quintillion times higher than natural background levels. The spectrum of electromagnetic radiation ranges from ionising radiation, like X-rays, which have enough energy to knock electrons out of their orbit and cause cancer, to non-ionising radiation, like microwaves, which have much less energy and considered to be safer. Mobile phones, tablets, phone towers, smart meters, baby monitors and Wi-Fi routers are all sources of radio frequency microwave radiation. Professor Bruce Armstrong was part of an expert panel on radiation, which gathered for the International Agency for Research on Cancer, or IARC. The panel was tasked with analysing whether radio frequency radiation could cause cancer. Its decision was essentially that it possibly causes cancer. That means radio frequency radiation is now classified as a class 2B possible human carcinogen. It was inevitably a controversial decision. What was your personal decision? I thought that, that I got it right based on the evidence. Heavy users are defined as those who talk on a mobile 30 minutes a day for longer than 10 years. Journalists like myself, tradespeople, brokers, even teenagers would easily meet that definition these days. Yeah. So I went to our Panza, our federal agency responsible for protecting us from the harmful effects of radiation. I asked one of their physicists, Dr. Ken Karapetis, for his view on IARC's decision. On a personal level, I don't think it should be a 2B. Um, other people say it should be higher. Dr. Karapetis says there's no cause for concern. We've been doing research in this area for, for a very long time and our assessment of the evidence suggests that although some studies do show effects, there is no established evidence that the low levels of radio frequency radiation from tablets and phones and Wi-Fi and what have you causes health effects. So our Panzer's not actually saying that these devices are safe? We can only provide advice on an assessment of the evidence um, we do not provide guarantees of safety. I don't think a scientist can do that. In Ontario is the former head of Microsoft Canada, Frank Clegg. He has gained valuable insight into the machinations of the tech industry. I've been in the technology industry all my career and I've seen the tremendous benefits that technology can provide. My concern is Nobody can say that it's safe. All my industry and all government agencies say is there's no proof of harm. And to my mind, that's not the same, the same as saying it's safe. Mr. Clegg points out the safety standard only protects people from thermal damage that can occur through overheating. But scientists have demonstrated that radiation-emitting devices can cause DNA damage without heating tissue. These are non-thermal effects. Unfortunately, the safety standards in, in North America and in Australia are, are based on this theory that's many decades old that if tissue doesn't get heated, then it can't cause harm. And that's just out of date. And what the biologists tell us and have shown in many, many experiments, and again, peer-reviewed published papers, 
that there is damage done at the DNA level and from a biological standpoint, it's non-thermal radiation can cause and does cause harm to humans. For example, there is strong evidence to suggest that mobile phones can damage sperm, as might occur when a male keeps his smartphone in his pocket. If you take sperm from a healthy man and you put sperm in one test tube which gets no exposure to a mobile phone and the other gets exposure, the mobile phone exposed sperm die faster, have more damage to their mitochondrial DNA, which is the engine that makes the cell run. And studies around the world consistently find the heaviest cell phone users have the lowest sperm count. Those studies have not been considered recently uh, in, in reviews, and there are new data emerging all the time. This bioinitiative report sets out hundreds of peer-reviewed papers confirming the biological changes caused by wireless transmitting devices, which can occur thousands of times below the safety threshold. It has been formulated by independent doctors and scientists from over 10 different countries. But our Panzer has a different view. There's certainly some studies that have shown effects on sperm, but there's many other studies that haven't. There is no consistent evidence that there's established biological effects other than rising temperature. So the evidence is really inconsistent, and, and it's not good enough at the moment to, to say that uh, mobile phones do affect uh, sperm. <laughs> IARC's decision in 2011, more evidence has emerged which adds strength to their findings. The Serenat study and Hardell study both found a link between heavy mobile phone use and rare head tumours. Those studies do suggest rather more strongly than the body of evidence available to IARC at the time that there is an association between heavy mobile phone use and brain tumours. These studies have sparked calls for the classification to be upgraded from 2B to 2A. My colleagues and I since then, some of whom have worked at the World Health Organization with me in the past, have just published an article saying that mobile phone radiation is a probable human carcinogen, with newer studies showing that people who begin to use cell phones regularly and heavily as teenagers have four to eight times more malignant glioma, that's a brain tumor, 10 years later. The fear about mobile phones causing brain tumours is not a new debate. Previously, industry co-funded a study hoping to settle the debate once and for all. The Interphone study was carried out from 2000 to 2004. The results were supposed to be released in 2005. It took five years to release the results of the Interphone study. And it was not because the science wasn't clear. It was because of the intense politics that took place between members of the team, some of whom had been heavily sponsored by industry and others of whom were more independent. The bulk of the study said the results were inconclusive. The actual findings in Technical Appendix 2 showed that there was a significantly increased risk of brain cancer in the heaviest users. Mobile phone manufacturers themselves are aware of the potential risks, which is why they recently put warnings in each device. Well, first you go to settings, mm -hmm. and then you go to general. Mm -hmm. Then you go to about at the top. Yeah. Then you have to look hard. You have to go all the way down. It's something called legal. Yes. And then you go to RF exposure. Oh, of course, I've never been in the, into this part of my phone. <laughs> well, there you see, it says to reduce exposure to RF energy, use a hands-free option, such as the built-in speakerphone. Yours says carry iPhone at least 10 millimeters away from your body. Mine says at least five millimeters. What do you think about this warning? I think the warning is, I think they're being a bit hypocritical to be trying to get you to buy more and more free talk time and then telling you you should limit your exposures. It's not only telco companies who are cautious about potential risks. 
Insurance giant Lloyds of London excludes cover for illnesses caused by electromagnetic radiation.